Tonight, a man's attempt to drive through a Minnesota river failed and led to the death of one of his passengers. Now he's facing serious charges. And in Michigan, a potentially fatal virus has surfaced in mosquitoes, and officials are now warning residents. Plus, we're live from the Lincoln Park neighborhood where a business boom is underway. From CBS 3 Duluth, this is the CBS 3 News at 6. Good evening, I'm Kristen Bakke. And I'm Anthony Matt. Thanks for joining us. We're learning tonight a Willow River man is facing charges after allegedly being high on meth and intentionally driving his car into the Kettle River Monday. The incident resulted in the death of another man. According to police, 43-year-old Preston Paul Prokaski is facing two felony counts of criminal vehicular operation after the incident killed the front seat passenger, 47-year-old Eugene Ostrike. According to the criminal complaint, Prokaski told police he thought he could make it across the river in a Ford Escape. When the car began sinking, Prokaski and another passenger, 48-year-old Gerald Darkow, made it out and got to shore. Ostrike did not make it out. A dive team was called in and recovered the car and Ostrike's body 14 feet beneath the water surface. Prokaski remains behind bars tonight. He's scheduled to be back in court September 24th. Tonight at 10, we'll hear more from investigators about the case. Closer to the Duluth, authorities had to rescue a woman from Lake Superior today after her sailboat crashed into the rocks on Park Point. Local emergency crews responded to the Minnesota side of Wisconsin Point around 3.30 this afternoon to report of a woman waving her hands in the water, calling for help. The St. Louis County Rescue Squad and Sheriff's Office was on scene and launched rescue boats into Lake Superior. The woman was safely rescued and taken to a local hospital for minor injuries. The sailboat was severely damaged. A 62-year-old woman has died following a house fire in Pine County Tuesday night. According to the Sheriff's Office, crews responded to a fire on Highway 23 west of Highway 107 near Brook Park. The homeowner says he and his wife were in separate rooms when he noticed the fire and smoke filling the house. The man escaped the home and made attempts to re-enter looking for his wife who was still inside. Fire crews were able to locate the woman's body. The man was taken to the hospital. The Red Cross is now helping him with temporary housing. A man has died after falling from the roof of a home just outside of Ely, according to the St. Louis County Sheriff's Office. It happened around 5 p.m. Tuesday at a home on Walsh Road in Eagles Nest Township. Officials say 55-year-old Hans Smith had been removing a downed tree for the property owner uh, for the property owner when he lost his footing and fell 20 feet onto a propane tank below. First responders found Smith unconscious and life-saving efforts were made. He died from his injuries. Michigan residents are being reminded to protect against mosquito bites for a potentially fatal virus. The state's Department of Health says the virus, called EEE, is, the, is one of the most dangerous mosquito-borne diseases in the United States, with a 33% fatality rate among humans who become ill and a 90% fatality rate among horses that become ill. People can be infected with the virus from the bite of a mosquito carrying it. The disease is not spread by horse to horse or, or horse to human contact. In some cases, permanent brain damage, coma, and death could occur. Anybody can get infection with it, but if somebody is over 50 years of age, under 15 years of age, they're not only more susceptible to it, but also more susceptible to getting serious infection. In humans, signs include the sudden onset of fever, chills, body and joint aches. Uh, EEE infection can develop into severe, uh, resulting in headaches, disorientation, tremors, seizures, and paralysis. Meanwhile, health officials are urging Minnesotans to get flu shots as soon as possible. Experts say the flu season could begin any time. The flu vaccine is recommended for almost everyone six months of age and older. Health officials say the vaccine was only about 50% effective during the last flu season. Still, experts say people are better off with the vaccination than without it. The department says more than 2,500 in Minnesota were hospitalized with confirmed influenza during the last flu season, and 126 influenza-related deaths were reported, including two children. At least 11 people say they got sick with E. coli after visiting the Minnesota State Fair this year. One of the patients is still in the hospital after the bacterial illness spread to their kidneys. CBS's Bill Hudson has more. 
Health department investigators say the sick fair visitors ranged in age from 2 to 43 years old. Six were hospitalized, one with a serious kidney complication called hemolytic uremic syndrome, or HUS. In that um, syndrome, it's called, your kidneys are affected, your blood is affected, and it can be fatal. The E. coli O157 strain is being traced to the miracle of birth exhibit. That's where most of the ill had some contact with calves, goats, sheep, or pigs, or possibly even surfaces exposed to the bacteria. It doesn't make animals sick. It's not a pathogen. It doesn't cause disease in animals. You can't tell they're carrying it. But it's, it's a very serious, you know, German people. The exhibit's baby animals are a popular fair attraction, especially with families and young kids. But with a threat from the fair over, the illness can still be spread. Once it's picked up from any source, it can spread from person to person, particularly in little kids, especially in diaper kids. Fair officials declined interviews today, but released a statement saying in part it has, quote, hand washing stations as well as educational signage, and it will explore if any changes or additions should be made for the 2020 Minnesota State Fair. Health investigators still hope to pinpoint the exact source of the bacteria. In the meantime, they suggest fair growers with symptoms of stomach cramps, diarrhea, or bloody stool go see a doctor. Antibiotics should not be taken and, in fact, can lead to further complications. Let's check in with Dave now for a quick look at the weather. Dave, not a, not a bad day out there today. Mm -hmm. No, we're still residing in the tail end of that low pressure system, though, so we still had some rain showers today and still a chance for some till about midnight tonight. To the Doppler we go, Anthony. Mm -hmm. There it is. Yeah, that low pressure system still working through the area. The worst is over, but again, residual showers could still pop up for a few more hours. But then things should change for tomorrow. Our day planner for Thursday says higher pressure taking over briefly should bring in a partly cloudy to mostly sunny sky and uh, at least another warm day here with high temps getting towards the upper 70s. How long can that last in September? Well, not forever. And we'll put an expiration date on the warm spell coming up in just a couple more minutes. All right, thanks, Dave. Well, summer may be winding down, but there's still plenty of opportunities to get outside and have some fun. Duluth Parks and Rec is hosting a number of events this month. This Saturday afternoon, they're hosting a family hike in Lester Park featuring hot dogs and s'mores. Then on Sunday afternoon, pop-up and play features a family-friendly event at Endian Plaza. On Tuesday, September 24th, head to Chester Park at 8 p.m. for stargazing and a night hike. There are more events through the end of the month highlighting our local green spaces. If you'd like to learn more about the events, we have a link for you on our website, cbs3duluth.com. Insulin prices have been skyrocketing for years now. In fact, they nearly doubled between 2012 and 2016. Minnesota Democratic Senator Tina Smith is authoring a bill that would combat the soaring prices. The legislation has bipartisan support from co-author and Republican Senator Kevin Kramer. Smith says that three, three of the largest insulin producers in the U.S. are driving up prices. She says that's causing people to choose between life-saving medicine and their daily needs. The senator said if passed, the legislation would make access to insulin easier and more affordable. While the bill has bipartisan support, Smith said big pharmacy companies are trying to stop the legislation from passing. Several new businesses are coming to Lincoln Park's Craft District. Business owners in the area are working to make the district a new hot spot in Duluth with lots of options for eating, shopping, and nightlife. CBS 3's Jenna Wells is in Lincoln Park with a look at what's coming to the area. Jenna, what can you tell us? Yeah, so Louie and Tom Hansen, they own four businesses right here in the Lincoln Park Craft District. Right behind me, it's the OMC Smokehouse. Across the street, we have Taco Arcada and Corktown Deli. And of course, down the street, the Duluth Grill. There's one more opening, though, right here, right next to OMC Smokehouse. It's going to be called Noble Poor. Louis Hansen says Noble Poor will add a new community-based layer of nightlife to Duluth's craft district. It includes a cocktail lounge with craft drinks and a cozy atmosphere. They're even working on a fireplace. Hansen says it's part of an ongoing community project to revitalize the craft district here in Lincoln Park. Pieces are coming together and the community is pushing to make this area that much more enjoyable to be down and really relax in and have a great time in Duluth here. Hansen says 
Opening a new business here is a piece of hope for the district, encouraging a fun and safe nightlife experience while generating more income for this part of the city. Coming up at 10, we'll hear more from city officials about this revitalization of Lincoln Park and how the craft district is really growing and how they're planning to keep it that way for the long term. Yeah, uh, Jenna, we know there's lots of businesses down there. I know you and I are fans of OMC Smokehouse. Yeah. Uh, what other businesses are opening up down there? Yeah, so there's a boutique that's actually going to be opening just down the road. I'll tell you a little bit more about that at 10 as well. And actually right above Noble Poor here, they're planning on putting a yoga studio. So a lot of fun things coming to the area for a whole variety of people to enjoy. All right, we're looking forward to hearing more about it tonight at 10. Thanks, Jenna. All right, well, do not make dinner plans tomorrow because it's the 28th annual United Way Chili Cook-Off. The event features a wide variety of chilies from both professional chefs and amateurs. The organization hands out 11 awards, including People's Choice and a Spirit Award. You're invited to sample as much chili as you want and then vote on your favorites. All the money raised stays with the United Way in the Twin Ports. The proceeds go right back into our community. And it helps over the 50 different agencies that we partner with to help support over 60 different programs to help everybody just get a little hand up, not a handout. The chili cook-off is tomorrow at the deck. It runs from 5 until 7 p.m. Tickets are 10 bucks for adults. Kids 12 and under are $5. Still to come on live, local CBS3 fall is in the air and experts are saying flooding could come with it. What you need to know next. Well, it didn't feel very fall-like today with high temperatures getting towards 80 degrees. This warm spell's been with us for a few days. Might be with us another couple, but it won't be here forever. We'll talk about when we go back to normal coming up after our break. CBS3 News is brought to you by Spirit Mountain. Profile has been different than other weight loss programs for me because all the decisions about what I need to eat have already been made. And it, it really gives me the freedom to just focus on other things while I, while I lose my weight. Are you a business owner in northern Minnesota? Vernon Insurance could lower your rates and provide better coverage. Vernon Insurance Agency has handled my insurance between three and four years now. The ease of access to talk to a real person, not an 800 number. Customer service, taking care of me when I have problems, if I have problems. They're a local team, too, so they're easier to work with. They understand where we're at because they're local. That's what I look for when I'm doing business with somebody. Call, visit us online, or see us in person at Vernon Insurance. We'll take a second look and find a way to get you the best value and coverage your business needs. I'm Carrie Harris, owner of Diabetic and Comfort Shoes. We have been in business in the Northland helping you with your everyday foot problems stemming from diabetes to plantar fasciitis for the past 17 years. Stop in and see the complete line of men's and women's shoes from SAS to Allegria to Vionic for those millions of people battling plantar fasciitis. And we still have a great selection of comfortable shoes for diabetics. Medicare and Minnesota Healthcare approved. Remember, no foot problem is too big or too small. We'll find the way to your soul. The Honda CRV is perfect for people from all walks of life. From the daydreamers to the night riders, and the carpoolers to the lone wolves. Let's not forget the young ones and those young at heart. No wonder people made the CRV the best selling CUV in its class. Hurry to your Honda dealer during the number one CRV event and get a great deal today. Just between us, you know what's better than mopping? Anything. At the end of a long day, it's the last thing I want to do. Ugh. Well, I switched to Swiffer WetJet, and it's awesome. It's an all-in-one, so it's ready to go when I am. The cleaning solution actually breaks down dirt and grime. And the pad absorbs it deep inside, so it prevents streaks and haze better than my old mop. Plus, it's safe to use on all my floors, even wood. Glad I got that off my chest. <laughs> and the day off my floor. Try WetJet with a money-back guarantee. I'm Bree. I'm a certified health coach here at Profile and have been in the Duluth location since we opened. As a coach, to make sure someone is successful, I tell my members I am there for anything and everything that they might need through this journey as far as support, education. I can do whatever they need. What happened to you? There's a woman. She wants me dead, and she's after you too. The people should know what really happened. Don't get too close to the fire. This battle is mine alone. I don't understand why we're still fighting. We are not who we once were. 
I'm not leaving you. FBI, after NCIS, a CBS premiere event, Tuesday. CBS 3 Weather is brought to you by Home Furniture. Now, the CBS 3 Duluth WeatherMax forecast with meteorologist Dave Anderson. Technically, we're still in summer for a little while longer, but uh, the trees don't know the difference, and some are changing quicker than others. Here's a, a maple in the woodland neighborhood of Duluth that's gone blaze orange while its neighbors are still green. So this is a very beautiful time of year. And for folks who don't want to let go of real summer, well, temperatures have been very supportive of your dreams, but they won't be forever. There is an end to our warm spell coming, and I'll tell you when that's going to be in just a bit. But right now, we'll tell you about the current conditions at the airport in Duluth, where it indeed is warmer than normal at 76 degrees. That relative humidity is 71%. Southerly, southwesterly winds are running about 15 miles per hour, and our air pressure is at 29.8 inches, or 1,009 millibars. And so, still a little notch below standard. But uh, I think numbers are going to increase pressure-wise tomorrow, and that'll bring us probably a few hours at least of uh, some sunshine. But then as early as Friday, we may go back towards clouds and rain, but enjoy Thursday while you can, I guess. Current temperatures, enjoy those as well. 74 Hibbing and International Falls, 75 Grand Rapids, 77 Moose Lake, and 75 even in two harbors, 76 in Superior, finally. Not so much cooler by the lake for folks there. 77 Hayward, 79 degrees in Ashland, and 75 to 78 in the Upper Peninsula. 60s by Lake Superior. Pretty decent day temperature-wise. This warm spell, like I mentioned, should last through uh, probably Saturday. And then Sunday we fall back to normal, which is mid to upper 60s. Okay, big low pressure system has been with us a couple of days here. Brought rain yesterday, some showers today. And its wraparound is still wrapping around through the region. So there's some on and off shower chances still possible to pop up till about midnight tonight. Then things should calm down. For Bermuda, things are picking up. Humberto has turned into a Category 3 hurricane. Our fingers are crossed for folks there. Here in our part of the United States, well, once we shake off our low pressure system, a very small center of high pressure wedges in between two lows to bring us sunshine for our Thursday, but only Thursday. As early as Friday, the second low gets to us, clouds go up, rain chances do as well, and then that round of rain could last Friday and Saturday too. Now, forecast tonight, Minnesota-wise. Well, here we go. I'll take a close look at those two lows just in case you wanted to do that. Get so excited. Sometimes I forget what my maps are going to do. But I remember this one. Hello, map. It says low temps 55 to about 60 for Minnesota. Rain ending by midnight, then the sky clearing. Wisconsin and Michigan get that same forecast with a range of low temps there 55 to 62. For tomorrow, Wisconsin, Michigan 75 to 80 for your top temps and a clear to partly cloudy sky. Minnesota gets the same sky conditions with high temps inland, 71 to 78. 60s to low 70s by Lake Superior. And now with the six-day, seven-day forecast, one of those two, yeah, we see that the rain chances do return for Friday and Saturday. Then by Sunday, our temps tumble back into the upper 60s and then stay that way for the rest of the week. All right, yeah, the maples in my yard sure are beautiful mm -hmm. right now. To yeah. Take a pic and send it to you. Yes, please do, because sometimes uh, viewers don't send in pictures on a given day. Some days I'm flooded with them, <laughs> and some days I'm, like, begging for them. All right. You got it, Dave. All right. Thanks. Well, as Dave mentioned, the leaves are falling, and that recent heavy rain we've seen is starting to cause a problem for the city's stormwater drains. Yeah, that's because they can get backed up and cause flooding. CBS 3's Emma Quinn spoke with Duluth City officials to learn how you can stop this from happening. As the fall season approaches and the rain keeps falling, chances are the storm drains outside your home could get clogged. Situations. The rains we've had over the last few days have flushed a fair amount of material through the system. Some of it's, I'll call it natural, the leaf litter and stuff is somewhat natural. Along with this kind of natural debris, pollution from people can impact the storm drains just as much. All that pollution can end up in a body of water. If that pollution, that pop bottle, that cigarette butt, gets into that system, it's going to end up either in the St. Louis River or Lake Superior. Ultimately, everything flowing to Lake Superior. The pollution, natural or not, can lead to algae buildup in the storm drain pipelines. But there is a way you can make a difference. Essentially, if you have a, a ditch or your gutter in front of your house on the street, if it's full of uh, material, sticks, leaves, grass, sand, dirt, whatever, if you can clean that up, 
dispose of it properly, and make sure that the catch basin inlets are clean and open. Throwing cigarettes and other garbage in the trash keeps them out of the sewers and keeps our natural wonders clean. On September 24th, the city's annual storm water meeting will be held at the MnDOT building. There, the public can share comments and concerns. Kelly's here to talk a little bit about what's coming up in sports. Kelly, right. September hey. baseball. September baseball. <laughs> we got that. Plus the NCHC preseason hockey polls. I bet you can't guess who's at number one. Mm. I bet you can't guess. Mm. But, <laughs> like Tony said, how about them twins? More on why next. The North Face in Columbia Sporty does 60% off. Northwest Hotlet Superior. I'm meteorologist Dave Anderson. Joining me for the forecast tonight at 10 on CBS3. CBS3 live cams are brought to you by Kohler Toyota. Home of the largest selection of SUVs in the Northland. Visit KohlerToyota.com for 50th anniversary specials. This is the Chevy Silverado with the world's first invisible trailer. Invisible trailer? Hop in. Silverado offers an optional technology package with up to 15 different views, including one enhanced view that makes your trailer appear invisible. Wow. That's pretty That's sweet. Cool. Yeah. Where's the trailer, though? <laughs> or get a total value of over 9760 on this Silverado All-Star without optional tech package or enhanced invisible view. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. Hi, I'm John. The Miners National Bank has proudly served our area for 115 years. We are locally owned and our deposits are reinvested right here at home for the benefit of our area. Come and see us. We're here to help. Equal Housing Lender, member FDIC. Update your home with the safety and warmth of a gas fireplace with the best looking flame in Duluth. At the fireplace corner, we take your old drafty wood burning fireplace to warm and reliable with our heat and glow gas inserts. Our heat and glow selection and financing options are backed by our 100% done right guarantee. Don't wait for the cold. Call or stop in today and visit your local heat and glow gas fireplace experts with the best looking flame in Duluth. Or click thefireplacecorner.com for our full selection. Sevens, sevens, sevens across the board. You can win big with a summer of sevens cash drawings through the end of September. Every Saturday in September, Seven Wins Casino is going to be holding hourly cash drawings. Each drawing will send a lucky winner home with $777 in extra lives or $777 in cold hard cash. The last drawing of the night is for a sevenly cash prize of $7,777. This is how we put the seven in seven wins. Join us for Lake Superior College's Firefighting and Truck Driving Career Night, Tuesday, September 24th. Learn how LSC can prepare you for a rewarding career in firefighting or the high-demand field of truck driving. Find out about admissions, financial aid, and more. RSVP today. At Super One Foods, you'll find more than just low prices and better choices. You'll find friendly faces like ours, working hard to save you money. Super One has a tireless commitment to quality and freshness and a goal of delivering five-star service to every customer to bring the absolute best value to your shopping experience. Check out these specials available at all Super One locations going on now. So stop into the Super One Foods right in your neighborhood. Super One Foods, serving you low prices and better choices. We really needed to update our bathroom. We thought it would be expensive. Not to mention the mess and horror stories we heard from our neighbors. So we called Bath Planet. They came to our home on time and designed a beautiful custom solution for us. Our new bathroom was installed in just one day. And they left no mess. Bath Planet is backed by the Good Housekeeping Seal. So if you want a great bathroom and great service... That's affordable. Call Bath Planet today. Call 218-228-0435. CBS 3 Sports with Kelly Hinson. Wow, what a ride last night's Twins game was. I feel like I say that at least five times a month because it took well beyond the regularly scheduled innings for the Twins to get the job done with Chicago. The Sox had pulled ahead in the top of the 12th by a pair of runs, but the Twins managed to come through with in the bottom frame with the Marwin Gonzalez RBI double to tie it up. With the bases still loaded, Ronald Torrey's took one for the team, getting hit by a pitch that brought in the game winner. That'll work. The win puts Minnesota five games ahead of Cleveland in the division, 28 ahead of the White Sox. 
if you're curious. Minnesota has one more game with the White Sox tonight with the chance to sweep the series before the Kansas City Royals come to town starting tomorrow. Well, NCHC Media Day is tomorrow at the XL Energy Center. We will be in attendance bringing you all the latest. So what better time to see how each of the eight teams stack up in the conference polls? Or more importantly, who's number one? It's like probably it pretty easy to guess that head. UMD men's hockey, after claiming the top spot in a number of national polls already, would handedly receive the number one spot in the preseason conference poll. This comes after a season where, I don't know if you knew this, but they captured their second straight national title. The rest of the rankings go as such. Denver comes in at second, followed by Western Michigan in third, North Dakota, St. Cloud State, Colorado College, oh my. Maha and my own Miami, Ohio round out the eighth. There's like a mix of a southern accent there, and it just caught me off guard. It was just last season that UMD quarterback John Larson was sidelined with a number of injuries. But fast forward through two games so far, Larson is pretty much back and honestly better. In the first two games of the season, he is thrown for over 500 yards and six touchdowns, including one touchdown that was on the ground. The Bulldogs are now 2-0 on the season, and head coach Kurt Weezy is praising the progress that his quarterback has made. John's taken another step as a, as a leader for a football team, I think maturity-wise and also confidence. John knows what he's supposed to be doing out there, so part of his second half was getting the guys around him to execute the way that we needed to as well. Every time I go out there, I know I can do you know, what I've been doing and hopefully continue to do that, and I just I believe in myself. UMD gets another taste of an undefeated squad as St. Cloud State comes to town this Saturday. That game is under the lights on My9 Sports kickoff set for 6.05 p.m. In some exciting pro hockey news, Emma Stauber, once prominent Proctor Hermantown girls hockey standout turned UMD Bulldog standout, is heading back to professional hockey. The Minnesota Whitecaps have announced they have signed... Stauber, she'll return for her second season after being a part of the 2019 NWHL Championship squad. She will also be balancing coaching and playing. She was able to work a contract with the Whitecaps to play the majority of home games because there isn't any scheduling conflicts between the home games and her Proctor Hermantown High School coaching schedule, which is very exciting. I don't know how she does it, but congrats to her. Yeah, she's going to be busy. Yeah, <laughs> very exciting. <laughs> All right, thanks, Kelly. The well, UMD officials say the remodel is more than a decade in the works. That's for their multicultural center. The spot is a gathering space for campus clubs and organizations like LGBTQ, racial diversity groups, and more. The motivation for the project began with a, pro a request to fund new carpet and evolved to see how much a remodel would cost. Good for them. That yeah. looks like a really good space. I sure hear it's does. much more open and yeah. it looks really great or works really great for all the organizations that meet there. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for joining us tonight. We'll see you tonight at 10.